Hello and welcome back to The Mix Academy. I'm David Glenn with TheMixAcademy.com. Today I'm super pumped to introduce you to my man Tiki Horea. He has been my assistant for quite a while, still serving under that role, but uh, incredible engineer in his own right. He's written for Sonarworks and a couple other publications. So I finally got him on to do some videos and he's prepared a sweet one for you today. I don't know if you guys have seen it yet, but my video... Um, how to start a mix the right way is probably the most popular video. I think it is over a hundred thousand views or so on this channel. And, uh, tell you what, man, he's got uh, a ton of extra stuff to add to that for you guys in Reaper. Now, hang with me, you Pro Tools guys who follow. Don't go just jump and ship the Reaper yet. You may be tempted to after this video, but uh, anyways, just joking. We wanted to expand our reach to not just Pro Tools users, but Logic Studio One. You're going to see a ton of content from us, and Tiki is going to be covering editing, mixing, mastering, you name it. Incredible engineer. My man, Tiki Horea, and I'm super pumped to turn it over to him. But first, if you haven't already, check it out in the link in the description, our Fix It in the Mix Guide. It's free for you today. It's going to help you take those closet vocals, poorly recorded vocals, evaluate the vocal. Was it recorded with or without compression? What do you do to it if it's got kind of a phasey sound to begin with and uh, drums that need replacement and blending and all that kind of stuff? Sound repair. I could go on and on. 17-page free guide down in the link in the description, our gift to you, especially if you're new here. We'd love for you to check that out. And uh, without further ado, let's move on in. And Tiki, you can take it away, bro. In this video, you're going to learn how to start your mix in Reaper in a systemized, effective way. Game-changing tips inside. Wink. Hi, I'm Tiki Horia with The Mix Academy and TikiHoria.com. If you hate doing your own mix preparation, I've got good news. This video walks you through exactly what you can do to make it faster and more efficient. Let's dig in. First things first, create a mixing template. It's gonna take you less time before you start mixing. All the professionals use mixing templates because yeah, time is money in this case, and you don't wanna spend time creating the same tracks and the same buses over and over again, do you? What if you have a 150 track template that covers all your needs? You've got all your most common plugin chains there, you've got your buses, you've got your special sauce tracks. Everything is just ready to go. That's how you can mix two, three songs a day by not having to go through the setup process every single time. Do it. Please, do it. Since you're watching a Reaper video, I'm going to mention the SWS extension and Repack. Both of these extensions extend Reaper's capabilities by a ton. The first step in the mix prep process should be setting the tempo for your project. In this case, it's 92 BPM. The reason why I want to set the tempo ahead of time is so that the items aren't stretched or compressed depending on your project settings. So just set the tempo ahead of time and you're gonna save yourself a lot of headaches. When it comes to importing files, there's a script pack from Xram that makes importing audio into your session infinitely easier than ever. This is a paid product at about 20 euros, but it's invaluable and it's gonna save you time. With this important script, all you have to do is rename the audio files to reflect the track name in the project where you want the files to import to, and then just run the script. So I've renamed the tracks here to fit the drum tracks for the song. Insert media files and watch them go right here. They're all where they're supposed to be, which is awesome sauce. Next up, I've got a custom action set to O. You can do this in Logic as well, and I'm sure you can do it in other DAWs. It's an SWS action. Move selected items to edit cursor. Then I select all the items and I press O and everything is lined up. Cool. I'm gonna skip ahead and sort out the tracks here. I've gone and deleted all the tracks I'm not gonna be using here, like the Tom tracks. I might be enhancing the kick and the snare with some samples, not sure yet. I've kept the sub track in case there's some serious sub stuff going on. I'm gonna show you a cool trick here. On my toolbar, I've got a few items here, like name from track. This is gonna rename the item. Name from item. This is going to rename the track. So I select the tracks and the items, name from item, poof, there you go. Very useful. In terms of coloring, things are a bit disjointed at the moment. So I'm going to get the color from this track and apply it to all these tracks and items. Having your colors right in the project is extremely important. The reason is because you want to be able to see where everything is, all the instruments, all the tracks, based on colors. And then you can further filter them by name. 
this is gonna speed up your mixing process significantly because you won't be wasting time searching for track names all throughout the session. We're gonna look at the true stereo script. Once all the files are in the project, I make sure there aren't any two channel mono or barely stereo items because many producers export all their audio files as stereo, even when they're actually mono. I mean, you could use a standalone utility like Stereo Monoizer, I know David does, to check for and fix fake stereo files. But as usual, Reaper can automate this task using a script. Run this script to get rid of that useless channel and save processing power for your project. In the actions window, look for gen underscore true stereo takes test dot e -E -L. No idea why I've got three of them. One of them works. Yep, this is the one. This script has two simple controls. A threshold slider that lets you set the level difference between the mono and stereo information and set the false stereo items to mono button. If there are any barely stereo items or items that have very little stereo information, such as pads that have a chorus on them to make them feel a little wider, they'll all be converted to mono. All the tracks in this project have been edited properly already, so I have no use for this script in this case. Next, we've got the backup track custom action. This is super valuable before editing anything, whether it's vocals or instruments. Let's say I'm gonna pitch correct the lead female vocals. Before I do anything to them, I'm gonna click the backup track button, and then I'm gonna double check the track manager. Yup. There's now a copy of the track with the suffix raw appended to it. And it's hidden from the TCP, the MCP, and muted. If there were any active plugins on the track, they'd be off as well. If I do both pitch and time correction, I have two backups of the track, one before tuning and one after tuning but before editing the time. Next up, there are two special scripts. They're special because they're very useful. Split selected items according to items on first selected track and delete new item at spaces. And Split selected items according to items on first selected track and keep new items at spaces. Let's say we've got doubles here. Let's pretend that's a breath and that I'm moving the breath to a new track because that's what I usually do. And these are doubles, right? I can go breath by breath and manually delete the breaths, but there's a faster way with the scripts. You select the item, you select the track, and you want to split the items and keep the difference. Poof! The breath's been removed. Now, you can do this after you've edited all the breaths and all the extraneous noise on the lead vocal track, then use the script on your doubles and you're done. Afterwards, you would be listening to the track and finessing the edits. But again, it's much faster than having to go and do everything manually. When it comes to normalizing audio and gain staging in Reaper, I generally go for a loudness of minus 20 luffs. Luffs means it's average and not peak levels. This number seems to satisfy the plugin's need to be fed audio at a specific level. After normalizing everything to avoid peak overloads with the drum and percussion tracks, I'll bring down their level by a few dBs, and then I might bring up the lead vocal tracks by a couple of dBs. Because this is gonna get me to a good place to start the static mix where my plugins behave well and my faders are in a usable place, so they're not too low. I select all the items and go to normalize, minus 18. Nah, I said minus 20. Minus 20 luffs. Now that everything's been normalized to minus 20 luffs, the drums should be super loud. But because of my template, the strings are actually going to be the loudest. Generally, in pop, rock mixes, you get the drums very loud. So you select all the drums and bring them down by a few dBs. You go to the vocals and do the opposite. You bring them up by a few dBs. X-Ray was very generous and he created a free script based on my request. The script applies the volume fader to the items themselves and here's why that's useful. Once I'm done with the static mix, I run a custom action that includes the script. The end result is that I have a static mix that sounds good and I also get all the fader resolution needed to further massage the individual tracks. Basically, each audio item is gain adjusted so that the fader can be reset to zero and the audio item plays at the volume you set before running the action. You will want to run the script before inserting any plugins on your track, or the way your plugin reacts to audio could change drastically. Here's my custom action with the script. Apply track volume to item, reset fader. Select all items is self-explanatory. Select only tracks of selected items. This one only selects the tracks that have items on them, so it's not gonna affect the bus or effects tracks, for example, and this is the mighty script. Offset selected items volume by their track fader value. Then. 
set volume of selected tracks to zero. And last, I've got another custom action that removes all the selections. Let's see the custom action in action. We're gonna make this lead vocal item disappear. Minus infinity on the fader. And action. The item is now at minus infinity and the fader is at zero. I love this script. Raymond, thank you very much. When it comes to automating vocals, you can do it by ear, obviously. Everything has to get the ear's approval in the end. But you can also do this. Open up a view meter, set it to a reference level of minus 18 dBs, and then you hit play. And your goal is to keep the vocal between minus 7 and 0. Obviously, you're gonna let it go a bit lower than 7 and a bit higher than 0. That's fine. Make sure your meter is looking at RMS levels and not peak levels, because you want the average. Have I lost my mind? Okay, so that's too loud. What I can do here is bring it down a notch. Have I lost my mind? There's nothing wrong with my eyes. I'm gonna bring everything down by 2 dBs. There's nothing wrong with my eyes. There's nothing wrong with my eyes. There's nothing wrong with my eyes. By the way, Sarah Joy, she's an incredible singer, she's an incredible cello player, she's an incredible songwriter, and she's super awesome. This is a song her and Daniel Jenkins wrote. Once you've gone through this process, the vocal's gonna be a lot more consistent. Plugins are gonna like that, your ears are gonna like that, everybody's gonna be happy. You can also do this with any instrument that you're aiming to have more controlled, such as the bass. This is how I approach mix prep in Reaper. Leave a comment if you've got any questions or suggestions for future topics. Have a good one.